Good morning, everybody. And good morning to those of you at home who are watching this service via social media. Would you please stand? With our service beginning on page 101 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you. And a a few words of scripture taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verse 20. Jesus said, Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Our first hymn is hymn number 51, Awake my soul and with the sun. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. So let us confess our sins to God our Father. Let us pray. And before confessing our sins as a congregation, let us take a moment of quietness to bring before God our own sins. Heavenly Father, We have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us 
forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand? O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We remain standing for the appointed psalm this morning, Psalm 111. The congregation will join in with the refrain. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Alleluia. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and honor, and his righteousness endures forever. He appointed a memorial for his marvelous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hand are truth and justice. All his commandments are sure. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. They stand fast forever and ever. They are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have those who live by it. His praise endures forever. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Gracious God, you are full of compassion. May we who long for your kingdom to come rejoice to do your will and acknowledge your power alone to save through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 5 beginning to verse, read to verse 15. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> and the gospel reading is taken from John chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, Unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand now and sing our next hymn, hymn number 346. 
angel voices ever singing round thy throne of light. Father, and in the name of the Son, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, may I speak uh, this morning, and may our hearts be open to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. It's uh, a favorite subject, isn't it? Food. And uh, people, people like to talk about food, people like to eat food, people like uh, to read uh, reviews about food, people uh, look up uh, TripAdvisor and the like to see uh, what other people are saying about uh, restaurants in their locality. And uh, our family's no different, and I'm sure you're no different. Um, we would, uh, I suppose, tend to, family celebrations are where... Uh, we're likely to eat out, or sometimes uh, we we eat uh, at home. Um, July, a birthday, it was a, a, a homemade afternoon tea, and there are a couple of birthdays and an anniversary in this month, so there will be uh, a lot of um, eating. And it's it's a, a lovely thing to do. It's so social, and it's uh, and also obviously the food is very enjoyable. And, uh, but there are other things, obviously, that food does uh, for us. Probably the, the most important thing is that it gives us the, the fuel uh, that sustains us, and, and that's why we so often hear about um, breakfast being such an important meal for us in the day. It gives you uh, the energy to, to get started. Also, I think uh, most of us would acknowledge if you're a little bit hungry, you can get a little bit tetchy. And uh, food can often just put us into a place of relaxation uh, and a little bit more peaceful. And not necessarily falling to sleep, but uh, I think that maybe happens with age. Um, but it's, it's something that we all enjoy doing. And um, 
And therefore, it should come as no surprise to us that when Jesus uh, uses um, imagery, he quite often uses imagery uh, around the, the things that people in their everyday lives uh, need and encounter. And today, uh, he is uh, using the imagery of what is a staple food, uh, that being uh, bread. And a little bit uh, earlier in that chapter, he uses the phrase, I am the bread of life. And he says, uh, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And in that short passage today, we I think we encounter what you and I would, uh, if we encountered somebody saying what Jesus was saying, we encounter a reaction like we might ourselves give. Um, the people, you, you, and I think you can probably understand, if somebody uh, came uh, into your company and, and said uh, some of the things that Jesus said, you would be maybe a little bit guarded, a little bit skeptical. Uh, he, he said, I am the bread, I am the bread from heaven, you must eat my body and drink my blood to, to be fed. And I think if uh, uh, those people who heard those words for the first time uh, would have indeed been quite wary of Jesus. And as those opening verses today suggest, that's exactly uh, what happened. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply amongst themselves, who can this man, uh, how can this man give us this, his flesh to eat? And you can see uh, that uh, his words, uh, as usual, uh, very often uh, cause people to think and provoke uh, people to into debate. And, uh, and today it, it is, is no different. But they, uh, at that time, Jesus was, of course, talking um, uh, um, uh, when we when we listen to that, we I think probably would immediately uh, think of the the Last Supper, which we celebrated here this morning at half nine. We immediately think maybe of the Last Supper when we read those words, and uh, we think of the bread and the wine uh, represent Jesus giving His life for us. And if you think from the point of view of those who heard these words for the first time. Um, the, the disciples hadn't shared with Jesus that last Passover meal. And, uh, and therefore, we can say that Jesus is saying something here that was maybe has a meaning apart from what we now call the Lord's Supper. And um, if you think about that, you and I would come to this passage with that very clearly uh, in our minds. But the, the first hearers of that certainly wouldn't have been. And... Um, and as I said, bread is, is a staple part of the diet uh, and was back then. And so Jesus is, is saying uh, that uh, he, is, uh, he is here to nourish and, and fill. And, and he's, saying, um, he's saying that, uh, 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 is saying what uh, came before was good. Yes, he, he's referring back in his... Uh, in his ministry to what came before in the Old Testament. He's saying that the law and the prophets, they provided nourishment to you. Uh, he's saying uh, Moses served, uh, uh, the bread that Moses ser uh, served, for want of a better way of putting it, as a starter, was fine. Um, but he's saying here that um, Jesus is what really feeds us and gives us life. And um, I think sometimes we can lose sight of that. And I, I think we can lose sight of that because uh, we belong uh, to uh, his body. We belong to, to the church. We belong to uh, what can be uh, on many, uh, on many, in many ways, looking at an institution which has an awful lot of activity surrounding it, an awful lot of things that are going on. It has... Uh, fellowship and sometimes we can 
uh, get involved in the, what is essentially the periphery because Jesus is the, uh, is the heart of the church and uh, we can forget uh, that uh, it is him, it is Jesus at the center that feeds us and nourishes us and gives us life eternal. And by feeding on him and taking him into our, our lives, we receive the life that he promised us and he speaks of in this passage. And do you know if you if you want to use that analogy of um, of a meal, you, you could um, you could feed on on starters. Uh, you, you 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 may go hungry, um, and uh, and in some ways uh, that that can be how you might describe the activities around the church, uh, around the periphery of the or not so much the periphery but around the church, all the things that we do. Um, And then we forget that Jesus is the reason for it all. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. And uh, as as I've mentioned, uh, Jesus um, uh, refers to what is a staple part of people's diet, the core, the heart. Um, We we would rarely go by uh, uh, without a a meal that centers on bread ourselves, would we? Um, But to be nourished you need to to eat it don't you you have to take it into yourself we have to and that and that analogy is is very important as we think in jesus we have to uh, accept him into our lives open our lives to him and welcome him in and uh, let uh, uh, let him be part of who you are and too often uh, i think uh, we we can keep jesus at, at arm's length and the reason that we do that is because when we read the gospels and we encounter what he says it's way too challenging for us it demands far too much of our lives it demands change it demands repentance it demands that we turn and seek his face and uh, we can uh, we we might say to ourselves well we'll keep him at arm length he's a good teacher but we're not going to let him in and um and, and, and I think in those circumstances, and, and if that is you, uh, or if that is someone you know, uh, let me, I think the word is clear here. That person uh, cannot be nourished. Um, uh, they, their heart and their soul is not open to the life-giving uh, 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 food that Jesus feeds us with. And um, you see, Jesus, uh, Jesus said, um, very truly I tell you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you you have no life in you whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them that verse 56 whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and i in them <clears throat> so um as as we reflect on this passage today if uh, jesus just wanted to talk about um if if he um if he just wanted to talk about uh, spiritual nourishment, he would not have gone beyond just talking about I am the bread. Um, but he also talks about blood, and it's obviously uh, talking about his death on the cross. And, and through his death, uh, Jesus uh, feeds each and every one of us. And as, as, we, as we know uh, from what he says, uh, his death his death was necessary. His death defeated sin. His death uh, opens up the, the gate of forgiveness uh, to us. And through that forgiveness, it opens up eternal life, a living relationship with God, our Father. And uh, for that to happen, a sacrifice must be made. Um, his blood uh, had to be shed. He had to die so that we could be fed. Eternal life is a free gift for us, but it cost Jesus his life. And that's why, as I spoke earlier, I said at the very heart of the life of the church is Jesus. It is his death, his cross, his resurrection at the very heart, and that's where we uh, find 
uh, our spiritual nourishment. Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life. And he's asking, in that he's saying, are you hungry? Do you find that uh, you, you are growing weak spiritually? Do you feel as you might when you are physically hungry, a little bit uh, jittery? Um, uh, well, he's saying, uh, I am here uh, and I, I am uh, I am the only food. I am the only food that gives eternal life. And um, as as uh, Christians have found uh, through two thousand years, and as we know uh, in our own time, there are many things uh, that we turn to to fill the impotent emptiness within us. And we know that they only last for a little time uh, and then they leave us uh, empty. How, how many people do you know? How many times have you tried other things that don't work? Uh, if you want to be truly filled and never hunger again, you have to feed on, on Jesus. Allow his presence to fill uh, your heart and keep him at the center of your lives, um, He is the bread of life, and if you've and I and I would say today, as, as we read this passage and reflect on this passage, if you've never entered in, uh, asked Him into your life, then don't let another uh, day go by without doing it. Or if you're feeling far from Him, um, uh, or if you're not even feeling, if you're feeling close to Him, uh, or if you're feeling far from Him, let me remind you that the way that you keep close, the way that you walk with Him, is is to do uh, the, the disciplines of being a Christian. And we had a little bit there in Ephesians. Um, it says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Go to that place. Go to your church. Go to your Bible study. Uh, go to your prayer, your point of prayer. And in that, you will find the psalms, the hymns, and songs uh, from the Spirit and draw you closer into God, your Father, and through Jesus Christ, his Son, who is the bread of life. So today, as I draw these uh, words to a close, I'm just going to finish with these words of Jesus. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our gospel reading today. And Father, as we think and reflect upon it, we, uh, we thank you for your son who died on the cross for us and opened the gate of glory. May we, uh, as we uh, remember his death and resurrection on this Sunday morning, may we be nourished uh, uh, by that and may our souls be open to him. In Jesus' name, amen. And 77, shall we gather at the river? Crystal tight forever, for we by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows from the throne of God. Margins of the river, dashing up its silver spray, we will walk and worship ever. Oh, the happy, 
we now turn to page 112 and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the King and grant his government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. Let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, 
and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. In the church's prayer for this, the twelfth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, you have always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, save through the merits and meditation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen and the colleagues of morning prayer that share together in the second and the fourth on page 114. O Lord, O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us that in all the cares and occupations of our daily lives we may never forget your presence, but may remember that we always walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in our prayers of intercession today, we pray for the church throughout the world. We pray for uh, creation, give thanking, thanking God for it. And we pray for family, friends, and, uh, and those that are sick or bereaved. Everlasting God, we come before you in this time of prayer to give you thanks for all you have done for us. We thank you for uh, the morning. We thank you for the power of the sun. We thank you for the rain. We thank you for the beauty of our rural part of Lisburn. We thank you for the ripening barley around us. We thank you, Father, for the flowers across the fields of potatoes. Help us to be aware of your presence and hear your voice and make us always ready to obey and do your will. We pray for the church throughout the world and especially here uh, in Macragall remembering our neighboring congregations as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And creator God, your son walked upon the earth and taught us to seek your hand in the beauty and the wonders of the earth and the sea and the sky. We often see evidence of our pure, pure stewardship of our surroundings, and it's easy to forget that the world belongs to you. Help us to recognize your presence in our modern world and help us to use more wisely the resources of the earth, remembering in particular those who do not get an equal share, those who go hungry uh, physically, those who suffer as a consequence of climate change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And gracious God, we thank you for family, friends, and neighbors, and for those around us with whom we work and share our daily lives. Give us a true awareness that we all share your world with others, and to make our homes welcoming places that reflect our Christian beliefs and values. And so, Father, as we look into a new week, mindful of those who might come to the door of our home and might cross the threshold, May they always be places of welcome where people uh, find nourishment, not, not just around a meal, but around your living word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, be close to all who are frightened because they are ill. Reassure them that because of the knowledge that you have, you have given to modern medicine that so many diseases can now be cured. And we name before you now all those who are in need of care, of your care at this time. And particularly, Father, uh, we remember those who have asked for our prayers. We remember Elsie in the Ulster Hospital, and we remember her family. Uh, be with them all. They would know your healing at this time. And we remember Lawrence in Craig Avon Hospital, and we similarly pray for him that he would know your healing. 
and that those who have shared his life, family and friends, would similarly know your strength at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And merciful God, we remember and thank you for the lives and example of those who have died in the faith of Christ and for the privilege of sharing our lives with them. We are very mindful at this time that there have many, been many uh, bereavements in this uh, rural area uh, between ourselves, Glenavy and Soldiers Town. And uh, we particularly remember uh, those who have asked for our prayer. We remember the family of David Montgomery. And we also remember the families of those who have been recently bereaved in the last week. Be with those who mourn and open their minds that they may find hope and the will to carry on and they find it in your son. Be with them with their heavy hearts that they are now experience. May they know your peace and your presence and your strength and enable them to take each day at a time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Holy God, thank you for helping us to pray. Deepen our loving so that as daily we pray through this coming week, we may do it with love and sincerity, in sure and certain knowledge of your abiding presence. And may we, in this week ahead, take those whom we have named in our prayers collectively, may we take them into our family prayers, and may they be uh, held up before you. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. A merciful Father, I would ask you to accept all these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now that lovely uh, hymn, uh, hymn numbers uh, 712, um, based on the, the words of Mary, Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. 712, which is our offering him today. <laughs>
be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's share together in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you.